Moi! If you guys work with computers a lot, you've probably had cases where you need to work with computers like this, whether that's for testing, maybe you're a sysadmin, you need to fix a user's computer, a server, something like that, and you need to have an extra keyboard, monitor, and mouse hanging around your desk, taking up space and causing trouble. So, in this little box here is a device that hopes to fix that. This guy is a USB KVM, keyboard, video, mouse. That means that this guy here in the little box can capture the HDMI output of my target PC and show it on my laptop as a window. And I can interact with that PC using my laptop's keyboard and mouse. So my laptop now becomes my interface to whatever computer I'm testing or working on. Of course, those are some pretty bold claims for such a small device. So in this video, I'm gonna put it to the test. So if you have an interest in a USB 3 KVM, then come along on this adventure. So what's in this tiny box anyway? Well, this is the Cytrans Kiwi, nice packaging. And this thing is even smaller than it looks. So it looks like they've sent me a nice USB type C cable and the device itself. Oh, also a USB A to C cable. And so the device itself is really quite small. Fits in my hand, nice injection molded case. So on one side I've got a type C connector and on the other side I've got a type C and an HDMI. And on the back I've just got a model number and that's literally it. Oh yeah, it's also got a user manual, but uh, who needs that, right? Okay, so since the cables that came with are so short, which is usually a good thing, by the way, I've had to rearrange my test setup a bit. So I put my laptop, my victim computer, my snacks, all ready to go. Now it came with a USB 3 10 gigabit cable, and the instructions are clear that they really want USB 3 for this. They don't want USB 2 going on. Now, if your laptop has been made in like the last five or 10 years, that's probably not gonna be a problem for you, but just keep that in mind. They've also included a USB 2 cable for the victim. They didn't include HDMI, so I brought my own and it's way longer. And so let's get this thing hooked up. So the USB 3 cable goes in there and then that goes into the laptop. So over here in the laptop, it now says a Kiwi is plugged in. So over here, I can plug in my USB 2 cable and my HDMI cable get in there. And I'll plug both of those onto the victim as well. Get, get in there, get in there. Also need power for the mini PC. By the way, this guy is my GMK Tech K10. It's what I'm gonna be using as the victim in this video. My Kali PC didn't come. I've used that for all my other KVM reviews, but uh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, fuck. Okay, so I guess I'm ready to power on the victim. So I'm just gonna start by capturing this guy. I think he's running Windows right now. Should be able to see him on my laptop and see what's going on. So uh, let's go. Well, that was easy. Looks like it just works. So uh, I guess it does exactly as promised. This guy is running Windows. I'm monitoring his video on my laptop. So now I can interact with this thing without having to set up a whole keyboard, monitor, all that jazz here. But we got some other features up here. Press the drag toolbar. Oh, I can move you around. Oh, that's handy. How about we put you uh, up on top? So we have menu, disconnect, full screen mode, paste text, take a screenshot, take a video or GPIO or settings. Oh, they have a button for uh, the three finger salute too. It's probably handy. How about we paste some text? Let's make a new uh, text file. And uh, tell it's paste. Okay, so it seems like we had a limit in how much we could paste. And it also messed up a few letters here by going kind of fast. I noticed in the menus it seemed to have like a 1K text limit for pasting text. That's probably pretty reasonable. On one of these KVM reviews in the past, I got stuck waiting like several minutes for the entire script of the B movie to paste into a computer, so uh, don't make that mistake. I also have an option of taking a screenshot. Let's see what that does. Saved it to my pictures folder, neat. And I guess last option I got is the GPIO port. So this shows me the side of the device. Oh yeah, by the way, there's this little like rubber cover over the side that has the six GPIO pins. So there's four GPIO here. There's a UART, 
You can use them for ATX power control or serial. Um, I don't really have any devices I can test that with because all I have are mini PCs here, but uh, it's nice to know they're there. They also have a mouse jiggler mode in case you happen to need that. And file sharing, which I am going to try now. So let's see if I can send this to mount a target. Let's see how this goes. Oh yeah, I got a virtual disk. Now last step, can I use this guy to reinstall an operating system? So that means, can I get into the BIOS? Can I mash the delete key, etc.? Can I deal with any weird resolutions the BIOS is doing? Can I get into imaging like a Linux installer? Now this thing has that cool file mounting feature. It'd be neat if they could also mount ISOs the same way, where you have the ISO in your computer, it shares it over USB 3. That'd be cool, but I got a flash drive with Linux on it. I'm gonna plug this into the system. We're gonna try to boot it. So I have a Mac, so I gotta hold function and press delete, which takes more than one hand, but uh, let's go. You're not supposed to do that. Okay, my mistake. I needed the escape key instead of the delete key, but now I'm in the BIOS. So it looks like I can navigate the BIOS just fine. Let's see, we're going to boot up to the UEFI disk as a boot override. That is this guy. Let's go. And we're into Ubuntu, just as expected. And the KVM works just as well. Okay, so the Kiwi. What do I think? This is probably the smoothest product review I have ever done. So if you guys have followed my channel for a while, you've probably seen my other KVM review videos. Now, most of them are not USB like this. Most of them are IP KVMs over the network. Those tend to have a lot more software complexity because they're doing IP, but they tend to have a lot of issues. So, I mean, I just did a security deep dive comparison video up here. I took four different KVMs like this and tested them. All of them had some sort of problems. This guy here has a much simpler goal. We're connected over USB, so we're just trying to work with a computer. We're not trying to work over the network. Our scope is much more limited. We're just acting as a keyboard video mouse. We can add a lot more of the complexity to the software app that runs Mac OS Linux, Windows. They have versions for all operating systems. Um, and this does exactly what they claim it'll do. And I've had no problems with it. So there's two models. I have the Pro here. Um, the Pro is $99 as of this writing. The basic one, which is just the non-Pro, is $69. Nice. The only difference is the GPIO, which is under this little rubber shroud here. So there's four GPIO ports that you can use for ATX control. They also support a UART, so you can do a serial port to your target. If you're working with a lot of like single board computers, if you're gonna do like Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi clones, Nvidia Jets and that kind of stuff, having these guys here to do UART to your target board is probably immensely useful. I am using this for full-size PCs where it's not very useful to me, so I would pick the $69 version. That's me personally. Now as to what's included in the box, they gave me a short USB A to C and a short USB C to C. Um, I would have liked to see an HDMI, although I understand their target market is like Raspberry Pi, single board computer stuff. And those very often use odd connectors like a mini HDMI or a micro HDMI. So I kind of understand not including it. Um, the other thing I'd like to point out is that when I'm set up with full-size computers, these cables are really, really short. So I would probably get like a one meter type C to my laptop. So I can dangle this guy off of my victim computer I'm working on, take my laptop and move it around a bit. If you're working with full-size PCs, it's probably the best recommendation. If you're working with single board computers, having it all set up next to your laptop like this is probably perfect. Another thing I looked out for in my review, some of the KVMs I've reviewed in the past have a hard time switching resolutions in the BIOS. So when these systems boot up, they often don't boot up into like 1920 by 1080 right away. Um, they might boot into like 720p or do other weird things as they're going through the BIOS. We're just changing resolutions in general. So some KVMs have a problem with that as well. This guy had zero trouble. So my favorite prior to this guy, KVM, would ask you like to approve a resolution change. And sometimes if you're mashing the delete key, that little dialog box popping up messes you up. This one did not have that problem. Also, didn't mention it earlier, but this guy shows up as a USB video device, which makes sense because it's a USB video device. 
So you can screen cap it in like OBS Studio or something like that. So if you want to use this to capture computers you're working on, like this is something I do a lot as like a tech reviewer. I am working at systems like this. I want to be able to use a device like this to work with my victim computer, test the victim computer, and record what I'm doing on my laptop. And so with this little device, you can screen capture 1080p 60fps from the device onto your laptop in OBS. Now they have a screen recording function built into their app, but since it just shows up as USB video, there's nothing stopping you from using OBS to record it as well. Now one of the more unique features of this thing is the file mounting. So the way it kind of works is you select a number of files, you say mount them. At that point your mount settings become inaccessible while it's mounted on the victim. The victim sees like a USB flash drive with some files on it that it can access normally. So other KVMs have some type of setup like this, some don't have anything. Um, I particularly like this, but it'd be much more useful to me if I could mount an ISO. So most of the time when I'm accessing stuff like this, I'm accessing a system that's broken or in some other not normal state. And that's why I have to work on it with my laptop. So being able to mount an ISO, like a Linux installer, over USB 3, even if it's a bit slow, super handy to me. Um, the file mount I can get being very useful if you're trying to work on like a single board computer, transfer files, that kind of stuff, which seems to be the sort of target market for this guy. But again, I'm thinking more like the general IT professional space, and for me mounting an ISO would be nice. Now that doesn't mean that their competitors can mount an ISO either. So you may have heard of the Open Interface. It's one of my, one of my favorites that does the same thing as this. It currently sells for $95, so a little bit more expensive. Their solution is to have an extra USB port. So you can take your Linux ISO and plug it in here. And then they have a switch in software that you can choose which computer it's connected to. So if I plug my USB stick into the open interface, I can choose laptop, transfer files onto the stick, and then choose victim, transfer files onto the victim. Sort of a dance that way. Now this guy's solution I think is much cleaner, not having to add the flash drive to it. But adding the ability to do ISO support would be Fantastic for me. Also, um, I know you guys are trying to market this to like single board computer people that are looking for a low cost product, but I think this would be really, really good for enterprise people as well. Um, like I said, if you're working in a server environment or even troubleshooting user desktops, something like that, the ability to use something like this instead of having a bunch of extra monitors on your desk is really helpful for me at least. I hate having extra monitors just for testing systems. So having like a more professional setup like this with like a carrying case, things like that, even if it costs more, I mean, it definitely would cost more, but having an extra optional whole kit, I think would be really nice. So that's what I think of this guy. I would absolutely buy one for 69 bucks. Not sure if the extra GPIO would be enough for me to need for my use case, but if you do single board computers, it'd probably be very useful for you. Okay, so if you wanna buy one of these, I've got a link to their website down below. It's not an affiliate link, just a link to their website for the regular version and the pro version and software. Uh, if you want to chat with me, I have a Discord server linked down below for that as well. If you want to follow me on Mastodon, it's kind of like the Dead Bird site, but um, it's a Mastodon. Uh, what else? Oh, I have a Kofi, coffee. coffee. Uh, if you want to give me a tip, I'd greatly appreciate those as well to fund projects like this that I do for fun. So uh, yeah, as always, I'll see you guys on the next adventure.